Good morning, Real Life Christian School. So hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. Hope you guys are ready to go now that it's Monday, getting back in the swing of things. Uh, we're going to get right into our scripture verse for this week. We are still in Hebrews. This is the fourth week of a four-week progressive scripture memorization. This is the last one. We're adding one more verse, verse four, onto everything else that we have memorized over the last three weeks. And I believe this is the largest chunk of scripture uh, you're going to have for the rest of the school year. Uh, but let's get, jump into right into verse four. This is what it says. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. Now last week we talked about uh, that Jesus endured hostility. He endured a lot of things on his way to the cross. And he's saying, in the verse there it said, don't give up. This verse is continuing on to that thought. After all, saying, don't give up because you have not done everything possible to resist sin yet. And there's really two meanings in this verse, and I'll talk about two of them just briefly. The, the first one, it says, after all, you've not yet given your lives and your struggle against sin. What it's saying is, have you done everything absolutely possible in your life to get rid of the sin in your life? Have you really done everything you possibly can? Uh, I'll tell you a little story. I have a friend. Uh, he has been struggling with certain aspects of sin for many years. And a few years ago, he decided that he was going to get rid of his iPhone and he was simply going to get a simple, basic phone that all he could do is make phone calls on. Because as long as he had internet access, he was going to places and doing things that he should not be doing. And, it, and the temptation was there in the internet. Even in his home, he got rid of the internet. He is internet free because the internet was too much of a temptation for him. So he got rid of it completely. Likewise, he was going to places and doing things that he should not have been doing. So you know what he did? He also got rid of his car. That's right, he got rid of his car because it was too easy to hop in his car and go someplace and do things that he was not supposed to be doing. So now, he either needs to ride his bike, he needs to get a ride from a friend, maybe he'll take the bus, um, but he's gotta think about, maybe he'll take an Uber if he really needs to get someplace, but he has to think about how he's getting somewhere. It's not easy for him to simply hop in the vehicle and go somewhere and do something that he shouldn't. And if he's riding his bike, he has lots of time to contemplate that. Lots of time to pray and say, God, help me overcome this temptation. Or if he's got to call people up. Now, if he's got to call up a friend to take him someplace, there's somebody that knows where he's going. And they, they can say, dude, I'm not taking you there. So it, it creates accountability in his life. It gives him an opportunity to resist the sin. He's, those are extremes. He got rid of his phone, got rid of his car so that he could resist sin. But resisting sin is more important than the conveniences we have in our lives. We need to, anything possible that we can do to get rid of the sin in our life, we have to do. Even that, if that means giving up some of the things that makes our lives easy or fun. Because I will tell you, going to hell will not be fun. So I want to be able to resist sin while I'm here on earth and while I have the option to do that. And so whatever I need to give up, I want to be able to give that up. But there's also a second meaning here. Yeah, when it talks about you have not yet given your lives, that means we haven't humbled ourselves. We talked before about giving your life as a living sacrifice, sacrificing your entire life to God in a living way, to do the will of God. So another way we can resist sin is to give up anything for me. That's what I can do. I can give up anything that I do that's for me and make sure that everything I do is for God another way to resist sin. So this verse is really talking about both sides of that coin. I need to do everything possible, and at the same time, I need to give up everything possible. Everything that I have. And that means we have to be active in what we're doing. We can't just sit back and say, oh, God will take care of everything. God will take care of a lot of things. In fact, uh, there's a quote. Uh, somebody said at one point, uh, God will do everything in your life that you cannot do. But the things that you can do, God expects you to do. So if there's something I can possibly do to help my situation, to help myself resist sin, I need to do that. And then I also need to pray that God will help intervene in those areas as well. But God's not going to do that if we don't humble ourselves and submit ourselves to God and His authority. And I know that everything's going to be right if I'm submitting myself to God, if I'm reading His Word, because that's how we find out the will of God, is to read God's Word. And if I know that everything I'm doing is in the will of God and for the kingdom of God, then I know that I'm going to be able to, be, to resist sin in the most effective way. All right, it's a really very short verse this week. We're adding, just tacking on verse 4 into what we've done, just a little bit longer. You guys have been doing great so far in your scripture memorization over the last three weeks. 
just one more week adding a little bit more it'll be great we'll talk about this more hopefully in, in every all your devotions and all your homerooms uh, throughout the week and then we'll probably talk about it in chapel on friday as well meditate this on this verse think about its meaning have you yourself have you actually done everything possible to resist the sin that's in your life so that you can be in a good place in the right place with god all right hope you guys have a fantastic week god bless